Abuja Network Studio and we begin the news from Edo State where the state government has ordered the police and other security agencies to do all they can to bring to book those responsible for the Iguaban train station attack on January 8, 2023. The state deputy governor Philip Shuaibo gave the order when he visited the scene of the incident. Good luck in Aine reports. The governor accompanied by the state commissioner of police, Mohamed Ampara and heads of other security operatives arrived the AKK train station in order to get a first-hand knowledge of the unfortunate incident where he met some of the eyewitnesses who told him that the abductors emerged from the nearby bushes shooting sporadically into the air among those abducted in the process according to the eyewitness were the station manager supervisor some of the workers and passengers set to board train to worry absence of security personnel non-functional cctv cameras power supply and bushy environment for some reasons they say could have aided the abductors they appealed to the state government to obscure the security networks so everybody was running heta skater at the station here so we are all looking for a place to escape a narrow a an exit a car that a passenger brought to this to the train station they started shooting shooting the the car, the oil and the for everything was they filled the whole card. Our security agencies, they are doing their best work. We can encourage them better. The deputy governor is hopeful that the security operatives will secure the remains of their abductees and assure the residents of their safety as government will put in place adequate security measures to prevent future occurrence. So whatever we have to do, the life of these abductors are key, critical to us. So it's not something that we have to just rush. They are putting what they are probably even in place. And what's going to be with some of them are out of it, but everybody has to be asked. Security operatives have been deployed to secure the area from Igwebe. Good luck in my name. Continues. And the federal government has condemned the kidnapping of passengers at Tony Kini train station, Igwebe Edo State. A statement from the Federal Ministry of Transportation indicates that security agencies are making efforts to rescue the kidnapped passengers and have also mobilized more security personnel to protect lives and property at the train stations of Ajakuta to Wari Road Line. The Nigeria Railway Corporation NRC has also announced the indefinite shutdown of the Tomikini station in Gwaban Edo State. Undisclosed number of train passengers and NRC staff were kidnapped on January 8, 2023 at the Tom Ikimi train station in Gwaban in Edo State. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party and former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, expresses concern over the recent attack on a train station at Igwebe, local government area of Edo State, and condemns the act in its entirety. A statement by the Atiku Media Office condoles with victims and their families and prays for safe return of those abducted. The statement adds that national security could be enhanced by amending the constitution to allow for state and community policing as first line of security to better safeguard the lives and property of Nigerians. And the federal government has restated its commitment to cater for families of fallen heroes and veterans for their selfless sacrifices towards ensuring peace in Nigeria. Now, this was at an interdenominational church service in Abuja as part of activities heralding this year's Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Ekene Ntudle was there. <laughs> It is a moment to share a thought for families of departed heroes, incapacitated compatriots and veterans. The sacrifices they made to keep peace in the country is not unnoticed, and this annual ritual is to say thank you to the heroes. This will be their season of remembrance. Messages of hope for a better Nigeria resonated from the pulpit as the clergy eulogized their contributions to nationhood. We are family to celebrate these men and women who fought for the unity of our country. Men and women who believe in the Nigerian project. Men and women who believe in the sustainability of this great country called Nigeria. 
Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo was represented by Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs and he came bearing promises of improved welfare for the veterans. I want to assure you the government will continue to invoke promises to address the challenges we face as a result of the law. Proper program within the summit for families of diseases as well will continue while efforts will be made to address inadequate areas. Intercessory prayers for peace, unity, and progress echoed in the center. But beyond the ceremony, the gathering is urging Nigerians to join hands in promoting peace and unity in the country. Ekene Ndului, NTA News. And to other matters, election of God fearing leaders were passionate about tackling the myriads of challenges facing the nation is pivotal to actualizing the vision of the nation's founding fathers. These and the use of transformational evangelism to correct societal ills are the recommendations put forward by stakeholders at an interdenominational Christian discussion of the Touch Bearers Society of Cathedral Church of Christ, Marina in Lagos. Joel Mugwala was there. The interdenominational Christian discussion is focused on how to address challenges facing Christianity in contemporary Nigeria and identify the need for unity among Christians and other Nigerians in order to foster peaceful coexistence. While pointing out the need for the church to be the light of the world rather than being part of the social vices bedeviling the nation, Bishop of Elisha Anglican Dowsis, Right Reverend Dakwashadu, also called for a viable blueprint that will galvanize the inclusion of all stakeholders in nation building. Whatever we are, we will die, we will appear before God in judgment, and heaven or hell awaits people. So, this kind of evangelism is what we should go for character, not prosperity theology, people feeling fine in church and they are not converted. We complain about this, we complain about that. So we thought that if we have a forum to be able to discuss it, that would perhaps give us a solution and the way forward in trying to resolve the issues that are bothering our, our, our nation. With the election coming up in the next few weeks, the charge for Nigerians is to make informed choice. Let us look for who has the best qualities amongst the 15 people that are offering themselves for leadership let's not look for the person who will be most advantageous to me or myself earlier the chairman of the channel television group mr john momo who chaired the lecture commended the touch bearers for the initiative established in 1942 the cathedral touch bearers society is a foremost known society in christ cathedral church marina in Lagos, Joel Bukwola, News. In other stories, all is now set to receive President Mamad Buhari on a working visit to Yobi State. During the one-day engagement, Mr. President is expected to inaugurate various developmental projects executed by Governor Bune administration. Talato Lamon reports that the presidential president would also inaugurate three legacy projects executed by the leadership of the Nigeria police. Friends and people of Yobe State are anxiously waiting to receive President Muhammad Buhari as all that is needed to accord him warm reception has been put in place. It is expected that Mr. President will inaugurate some of the projects executed by Governor Maimalabuni. This includes the over 3,000 housing estates and four modern markets, among other completed projects. All the projects are so enormous. But you know, this is a Mr. President. The governor selected few as symbol for Mr. President to see and commission them. The 300 bed capacity maternal, newborn, and child health complex, equipped with the state of the art facilities, is also set for unveiling by Mr. President. Other projects awaiting presidential inauguration are the international cargo airports, modern mega schools across the three senatorial districts in Yobe State. In Damatu, Talatulamon, NTN. And as APC supporters and stakeholders in a quiet bomb state are in high spirit to receive the party's presidential campaign train, one of the key features of the rally is the groundbreaking of a 6.8 billion naira power generating substation by the federal government. Now, the people received this sharing news sharing a stakeholders meeting in the Biano Ibom local government area of the state. Here is Clement Barque. 
The 6.8 billion naira power generating substation in the Bionibom local government area, when completed, will provide power for more than five local government areas, including Ibionibom, Itu, Abak, Imi, Ikono, and Environs. The groundbreaking is going to be by the uh, uh, Minister of State for Power. For now, the uh, contractors are on site to make the site ready. The former senior special assistant to the president of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Itainang, told the party supporters that all misunderstanding among party leaders in the state have been put to rest and the party is set for victory at all levels. We've been able to calm the people and assure them that we are together. What I did was to bring all the aspirants who bought forms for the different offices and assure them that there, uh, there is only one APC. Uh, that enthusiasm, that energy that has been um, activated by virtue of this meeting will be taken into the units, into the wards. What you've seen here is a scenario that all of us, we are towing the line of the party. We believe in party. At the end of the World and Chapter Stakeholders meeting, the people unanimously agreed to support the party elders and leaders in the state for a total success particularly as they prepare to host the APC presidential campaign rally in Uyo. Clement Barikui, NTA News. You're watching the news on Newsline tonight. Let's pause for some commercial break and the news returns presently. <laughs> 